are now in the next lecture and we're going to talk about random number generation. So computers cannot actually create random numbers because they're Turing complete. And for that matter, humans don't really create random numbers either because it turns out when people try to make random numbers, they do a really bad job at it. Uh, the numbers that humans consider random are actually rather predictable, far more predictable than true random numbers. So what computers do instead is attempt to emulate random numbers via pseudo-random numbers. Uh, these are random numbers that are produced by a function and are a sequence that, rather being random, is just chaotic. So it's difficult to predict what the next number is going to be based off the sequence, and hopefully it's going to be uh, just about impossible to predict what the next number would be in the sequence. But if you knew what the seed was, then you would be able to predict because you could reconstruct the random sequence. So random number generation in computers, and this is going to be the case for R, uh, is done by first setting a C to some value. The seed is a completely arbitrary number. It represents the first number in the sequence. And then after that, the computer will generate additional numbers in the sequence. So the function for setting the seed is a function called set seed. And we set the seed using uh, with the via the seed parameter. Uh, you just give it some number. So in this document, uh, or in this this uh, uh, video, I'm going to set the seed to 52716. Why that number? Why not that number? That's basically why. Uh, so here is the seed. Uh, and uh, now our computer is ready for random number generation. Although, that said, I didn't have to set a seed in order for R to do random number generation. It's not a strictly necessary step. But if you want for some reason, your random numbers to be uh, replicable, then you set the seed. And you do so before you generate any random numbers. All right, so there's a function called sample that allows for very basic random value generation. So we have two uh, arguments to sample. We have a vector x and uh, a parameter called size. So uh, here I represent, here I am, um, run sample and what I've basically done is uh, created a vector that consists of 33 red let's call them balls 33 red balls and 16 blue balls and uh, it pulls five uh, items from this uh, a theoretical or hypothetical bag so we got blue red 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 All right so one blue and four reds and uh, now What's actually going on when I run sample this way is the function is doing sampling without replacement. Sampling without replacement meaning that when it pulls a blue, that blue has been in, in effect removed from the bag and cannot be pulled again. Same thing with those reds. So if I have, for instance, a sample uh, one to five and I do two, everything is going to be unique because when a number gets pulled out of the bag, it cannot be pulled again. And in fact, if I were to set this to five, what I basically get is a random permutation of the numbers one through five. Because it pulls out five, it can't pull out five again, so it's going to pull out one. Can't pull out one again, so it's going to pull something else out. Two is left, so it pulls out two, and so on until all the numbers are exhausted. I think that if I were to go to six, it will even just complain. Yeah, it will complain. So if that is not the type of sampling we want to do, and we want to sample with replacement, then there is a parameter called replace equals true. Setting that parameter to true will cause it to sample with replacement, and now you'll notice that there are duplicates in what it's pulling out, because it pulls out the 5, and then it puts the 5 back in the hypothetical bag, pulls out a 1, puts it back in, pulls out the 1 again, puts it back in, pulls out another one, puts it back in, and so on. So uh, that's um, uh, sampling with and without replacement. Uh, so if we wanted to, we can uh, keep uh, playing around with this. Uh, in, in the end, when we're sampling without replacement, so in this case, every single ball was pulled from the bag because it's pulling without replacement. So if we were to build up a table, we discover there's exactly 16 and th blue balls and exactly 32 red balls. Um, here is a situation where we do uh, no replacement. No, we do, we do in fact have replacement, my apologies. Uh, 
And when we have our table of uh, possible values, oops. Uh, when we have our table of possible values, we get 14 blue balls and 34 red balls, which is not what we started out with in the bag, but that's possible when you're doing sampling without replacement. Uh, by default, sample is assuming that everything is equally likely, but if you wanted, you could give the sample function uh, a value for the prob parameter. So in this case, uh, the prob parameter represents the probability of each of those outcomes. So here I did sampling uh, and I made the red balls more likely than the blue balls by literally putting more of those balls in my vector. If we did, there's a simpler way to do that, which would be to use prob if what we're doing is sampling with replacement. In that case, what we're doing is we're saying the probability of getting red is 32 out of 48 and the probability of getting blue is 16 out of 48. And this is the result. All right, that's it for this video. Uh, I hope you learned something, and I will see you in the next video when I talk about uh, sampling for families of distributions.